Herzlich willkommen zum 36. Dogfest München. Herzlich willkommen zum Dogfest München at Home 2021 aus dem Silbersaal des Deutschen Theaters, wo normalerweise Kino wäre, aber dieses Jahr leider nicht. Deshalb machen wir hier unsere Filmgespräche. Mein Name ist Isabel Fontou und ich bin Mitglied im Programmer Team und freue mich sehr, Ihnen heute den Film Bad Nazi, Gut Nazi vorstellen zu dürfen, vom Regisseur Hanov Zelvi. Ein Film aus Israel, der bei uns auf dem Dogfest in einer Weltpremiere läuft, und zwar im deutschen Wettbewerb. Und nun freue ich mich sehr, den Regisseur begrüßen zu dürfen. Welcome, welcome Zanoch Zelvi. So, welcome. How are you at, at, at the moment? I'm fine, you know, uh, the whole world is in strange days and strange yes. uh, year, but uh, I hope we can see the light at the end and uh, I hope we will be over that uh, pandemic, pandemic uh, yes. soon and yeah. And you are, you're at home at the moment, so where are you at the moment? I'm, yeah, I'm at home and now uh, I'm vaccinated, uh, okay. of, of course, and uh, now the situation in Israel is quite uh, well, so I'm happy. So you're lucky that you, you're, I think many more people are vaccinated in Israel than in, in Germany at the moment, so you're really lucky. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, and your film um, was shot in Germany mainly, and how, my first question would be, how did you get the idea of making a film about a small village in, in Germany? First, uh, originally, I came from a small village in Israel. So, I know how it is to live in a small village, and, you know, uh, uh, I felt like at home when I came uh, the first time to Talau. Uh, but, you know, it's not just the village, but uh, uh, the story of Willem Rosenfeld that caught me. Uh, usually I'm trying, as a filmmaker, I'm trying to look after new points of view uh, to tell the story of the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. I think uh, it's important to, to tell the classic point of view, uh, but also I need, especially today, especially if we want to reach the youngsters, we need to look after a new point of view. And I think it's important to, to set a dialogue between the two sides, between you, um, the Germans, and between us, uh, the Israelis. And uh, I'm trying to do this uh, in my previous films and also in my current film, uh, Bad Nazi, Good Nazi. Okay, and what would you say is the, the new point of view that you were trying to tell with, with this film? Is it um, connecting um, the, the Holocaust history with the actual German history, or what, what, is, what would be the new way to, to um, tell the story? I think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a story about uh, one soldier, one uh, officer, one German officer. And uh, of course, it's, uh, I like the idea that uh, he is well known uh, because of the film, the, the famous uh, uh, film, The Pianist of uh, uh, Polanski. And uh, you know, in, in The Pianist, he has uh, only a small uh, role at the end of the film, but uh, his character caught me because uh, I asked myself uh, what made him to act differently mm -hmm. from many, many, many others. Uh, why uh, he was the one who decided uh, to help uh, Vladislav Spielmann, the Jewish pianist. And after I heard the uh, research by Hermann Winke, the German uh, author, J uh, Hermann Winke, about him, and I realized that actually he was a serial, and he actually saved uh, uh, something like 60 uh, Poles and uh, Jews as well, uh, I thought maybe we have a story here. And uh, when I uh, researched more, I understood that in his village, uh, they don't know how to eat mm -hmm. uh, Willem Rosenfeld. And I heard that uh, he is not uh, a hero in the village. And it was strange 
uh, to me. And when I heard that there is a group in Talao that trying to uh, commemorate him in the village, and it's a uh, kind of uh, something like uh, less chance to do it because they, they tried to do it before and they didn't succeed with this. So I, as a filmmaker, I thought it, it's, it's a great uh, opportunity to be fly on the wall uh, in the struggle in, in uh, the village. And I thought it's, it's, uh, we can learn something about how Germans um, deal with the dark past. And I tried to put uh, myself in the shoes of the Germans. Uh, how should I react in such a story, in such a case? Mm -hmm. So I thought it's, it's both. It's to tell the, the story of Wilhelm uh, Hosenfeld, that I think it's extraordinary story, mm -hmm. but also to, 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 to bring the, uh, the struggle in the village and by doing this to, to learn something about how Germany mm -hmm. uh, deal with the past today, mm -hmm. not uh, just to tell uh, a story about the past, but also about the present and how uh, it react mm -hmm. uh, and uh, how it reflect mm -hmm. uh, also the, the future. Mm -hmm. And um, I think your point of view is a very interesting one because you, you, as a foreigner and as a Jew, you see things different than we from the inside. And um, I asked myself while I was watching the film, why is it so difficult for us Germans to deal with the dualism of being a Nazi and um, rescuing people and rescuing lives? Um, why is it so difficult for us? What, what is your opinion after making this film? I think first uh, it forced you to ask questions about your family and mm -hmm. it, it forced you to ask questions uh, about your relatives. And I can understand why uh, the first reaction will be, I don't want to touch it because I don't want to, to, to take the skeleton from, uh, uh, from the, the closet. Uh, maybe it's better to, to, to build a new life without to ask the question. But I think that we, the third generation, uh, we have the, the strength to ask the hard questions. Mm -hmm. And it's not easy. It's not easy for me to hear uh, uh, horrible uh, stories about uh, my uh, family and about the horrors from the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And also, and of course, I'm not comparing. It's not easy to dig in the past of your family. Uh, so I can understand why the first reaction will be, don't touch it. But I think that time has come, uh, more than 70 years later, time has come, it's not easy, but let's, let's do it. Let's uh, set a dialogue, the two sides, you the Germans and we the victims. Mm -hmm. uh, let's uh, preserve the memory but by setting a dialogue, honest dialogue between the uh, two of us. Mm -hmm. And how, how, did you, how did you manage to shoot with um, all the different people in the village, even with those who at first um, were, were very careful and not, not very at ease with, um, with the, the decision? I th how, 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 could you, how, how did you manage to, to be um, um, present when, they, when there was the decision taking? Yeah, uh, of course I, I imagine and I know that some of the residents, they didn't want to participate in the film uh, when the, uh, the village members gathered uh, in the cafe to discuss uh, the uh, commemoration of Odenfeld, they didn't appear, uh, but uh, it was okay and I understood this. I can tell you that uh, I know that some of them after they met me and we had the small talks together and they learned that uh, I came for peace uh, because I just want to keep the memory of the Holocaust uh, and to set a dialogue, as I said, and uh, I don't blame uh, nobody because I, don't, I think that it's a fate to be born to uh, such a family. Uh, you didn't choose to be born to, uh, to this family and uh, it's okay, but please just help us to uh, reopen the story uh, mm -hmm. without blaming. Mm -hmm. So I think some of them, they decided to, to participate uh, later, not from the beginning, but uh, you know, uh, we filmed uh, 
over than two years in Talao. So uh, I think some of them convinced that uh, we came for peace and uh, they decide to, to participate in the film after all. And maybe it even um, was helpful for the decision of um, towards making a commemorial for Wilma Hosenfeld, maybe because they get, got to know you and maybe this made it more like more present to them, maybe even. Yeah, I think, think first I think, I think the story is uh, Wilhelm Hosenfeld and not uh, Hanoch Zaevi. Of course, but yet, of course. But yet, but yet I think uh, maybe it uh, forced them uh, to think deeper and to, to understand that they have a unique uh, native uh, in their village. Uh, he was Nazi at the beginning, he admired Hitler, but uh, later he asked questions and uh, he understood that he is taking a, a role in a crime and he changed uh, his uh, ways. Mm -hmm. So I think uh, they understood, the people in the village, they understood that uh, maybe we can hug this uh, uh, native, we can learn something from it. I think uh, in the gathering of the uh, residents in the cafe in the village, the principal said a very, very strong sentence that I, I felt very connected uh, to what she said. She said that uh, as a principal, I can educate the youngsters um, uh, in the light of Wilhelm Rosenfeld because it's okay to admit that he was a Nazi, that he admired Hitler, but yet he decided to, to change his mind, to change his way, and uh, let's learn from it. And uh, I also, as a filmmaker, I think it's a, it's a great opportunity to learn something from uh, the story of Wilhelm Hosenfeld. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And um, I think um, you learn a lot from um, the readings of his diary as well, because there you get to know how he thinks and also how he changes during his, his life and during his being a uh, Wehrmacht officer in, in Poland. And so my question is how um, this, the readings are made by Friedhelm Hosenfeld, the great, um, the grandchildren, grandson of, of Wilhelm Hosenfeld. And mm -hmm. my question is how, how did you get to, um, to know both um, Mareika and um, Friedhelm Hosenfeld, the two grandchildren, and how was your decision to let them play a really important role in the film? I thought that uh, the, the easy way for a filmmaker is to take a good narrator and asking him to, to read the diaries. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to tell a personal story about the family of Rosenfeld. And I thought that it would be great to have the grandchild um, reading uh, the diaries. It's something much more warm, I think. And uh, I think it's also you can hear the voice of uh, Wilhelm Rosenfeld uh, uh, himself, mm -hmm. because he's, uh, you know, the same bloodline. This is the grandchild. So I was very happy that uh, I met uh, Friedhelm and Mareika, and they were very happy to participate and to take part in the film, because they also wanted to, to reach, to dig in their story, uh, to, uh, to research, and to learn more about uh, their grandfather. So it was win-win. So I, as a filmmaker, I, I was very happy that I have the grandchildren because it's very, very personal and warm. And uh, they were also happy because they did the research. They, uh, at the uh, peak of the film, they, they uh, arrived to the same attic where Vladislav Spielmann uh, uh, was hiding in Warsaw. So it was a very special and very emotional moment also for them. So in this case, I, I feel that I was lucky that they decided that they want to participate and they want to co uh, cooperate with me. Yes, I think it's much stronger that Mareika is the one climbing in the attic and not you, because it's really her personal history that she discovers in this moment. And, but how did you find the attic? Research. It's not, it's not me. I had a, I had a great uh, researcher uh, here in Israel, but also I had a Polish researcher. And uh, it's not open for public, uh, the attic, but uh, 
he knocked on the door of the owner of this uh, attic and they agreed to, to let us uh, film there. And it was very, very emotional uh, for me because for me, the pianist, the film uh, was very, uh, in, the film uh, itself, the pianist itself uh, inspired me. Mm -hmm. And it was great to, to see the, the real place, uh, to be there, because in the pianist, it's, it's not uh, the real place, it's, it's a set. It's yes. a, it's a yes. set and not the real place, but uh, in our film, the documentary film, it's, uh, it's the real location. Mm -hmm. So it's something very, very uh, strong to be there. Yes, to find it. Mm -hmm. And it, I think it's always also very strong to see the real, the, the fiction film, the pianist film, um, projected during your, your film and seeing the, the inhabitants of the village watching it. And, and my question is, how, how was it difficult to get um, this, the rights to show this film and to implement this, it in your documentary film? Okay, so first, uh, during the research in Talau, I understood that uh, they didn't show the pianist never. Really? So, yeah, so I said, okay, so we have the chance now in our film to do the, uh, the first ever screening of the pianist in Talau, and it will be great to have it outdoor screening on the wall of the school that uh, Wilhelm Rosenfeld uh, led as a principal. Uh, so, of course, we con contacted uh, Roman Polanski and uh, he gave us, uh, uh, he said that he will be uh, very happy that we will uh, use the, okay. his film uh, in our film. So, I'm very happy that we did it. By the way, I didn't know if uh, the people in Tala will uh, show up uh, to the screening. Okay, uh, I didn't know. And I saw maybe maybe we will have empty chairs there. But uh, as you saw in the film, uh, I'm happy to say that uh, most of the residents of Talau, they decided to, to, to show up and to be there. And it was a very, very strong and emotional uh, screening because as you know, The Pianist is not an easy film to no. watch. No. And uh, it was very, very strong to me as an Israeli uh, filmmaker and to be in the village in uh, Talau and to see again uh, the pianist there, it was a very, very strong and special moment. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is a, a special moment in the film because you see the reactions of the, the villagers um, watching this film. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's one scene in the film which is also very strong and it's the scene with the old knitting ladies. And I wanted to ask um, how, how did you meet them? Um, how, how was this very special? special moment, I guess. How, how did it, did you, did you produce it? First, I think uh, the people uh, in Talo, they eat a very, very good food and fresh. Uh, so they live uh, long lives, as you, as you saw in the film. And uh, I said, uh, I calculated and I said, okay, if there are many, many old people here, so maybe someone uh, was uh, a student of uh, Wilhelm Rosenfeld uh, himself. And uh, surprisingly, I realized that there are uh, four old ladies that remember him as a teacher. And uh, I said that it will, it will be great also to portray uh, the, the life of the village because everything is very, very basic. And they were so kind and so uh, nice and they were so happy to be filmed and to sing the song that uh, he taught them uh, in the school. But I uh, got another thing because uh, it was very, very strong to me to hear that they said about Wilhelm Rosenfeld that he was different and he spoke with words without uh, a stick. And I think it's, it's, it was very important for me uh, as a director to have this scene because you can learn that uh, it was there from the beginning. The morality of Wilhelm Rosenfeld was there from the beginning because as a teacher he was different and uh, as a soldier and then uh, as an officer, as a German officer, he was also different because uh, uh, he was different because he has uh, morality and uh, morals at, uh, in general. And uh, so I was very happy because uh, in one hand uh, it's a Holocaust film 
but you can laugh when you, you see the scene with the old lady. So I, I, I liked it. I liked the, com, uh, the combination that uh, it's something very, very uh, unique uh, to Talao, but also uh, it's very important to understand the personality mm -hmm. uh, of the main character of the film, of uh, William Rosenfeld. Yes, and in a way, the, the old ladies are, in a way, the oldest characters of the film, but also the youngest in the scene, I think, because when they remember, they really, um, they, they, um, they, they, they speak and look like, somehow like little children remembering their, their teacher or their principal. And this is the moment where I thought, maybe it's not on, only a film about, about not only a portrait about um, a Nazi becoming someone who um, rescued people, but also about education. It's also a film about education and about how to, to educate people and how to um, bring your own morality into to other, to, into other people's minds, maybe. I, I totally agree, because uh, for me, As I said in the beginning, I want to learn something from the Holocaust. I don't want to, I don't want just to tell the story again and again, mm -hmm. but trying to learn something. And if we want to learn something, it's the, one of the things is what, what you said at the moment, that uh, it's not a question of, uh, of bloodlines. Uh, you need to choose to be evil. You can choose to be a good person and uh, you can educate by Uh, by the morals that you can uh, see in, uh, in uh, Wilhelm Rosenfeld. And it's not just in Germany, because I'm trying to, to compare it to other places around the globe and uh, where, the, where we have uh, conflicts. And it's important also to understand that you, you have to choose to be a bad person. You always can choose to be a good person. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, it is a question of education. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yes. Mm -hmm. And one last question is, um, I, th I think what is really interesting in your film is the music as well, how you, how you work with music and how, which style of music you use. Because you, you told, just told us about the song of, from the old ladies that is, um, we heard um, several times in the film, but also there's really a, a score in this film and it, it, um, it has a special um, meaning, I think. The, the way you use it. So maybe you can tell us how you worked with the composer. Yeah, I, I am working with the composer uh, Ophir. Uh, he is the one who also was the composer of my uh, film Hitler's Children, my uh, uh, previous film, al always uh, also uh, shown in uh, Dogfest München yes. a few, mm -hmm. few years ago. And I very like his style and work. And in this film, Uh, it was very important for me uh, to do the differences between the beauty of the village, the beauty of the landscape of Talao, but also we are going in the past to the Holocaust. Mm -hmm. And the music here uh, has a very important role uh, to fill the scars. Uh, maybe the picture is very nice and very beauty shot, but We still need to understand that it's very, very deep and we still uh, 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 carrying a scar uh, because of those years, the dark past of uh, uh, the Holocaust and World War II. Um, so I think he did a very good, uh, I was very help, happy with uh, the music because uh, he understood what I meant mm -hmm. and uh, I'm very happy about it. So it was about the, um, the mood you wanted to set in the picture, or the contrast maybe also that you wanted to set. Especially the contrast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think this works really well. Mm -hmm. it, 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 gives, uh, it gives a special depth to the film, I think. Mm -hmm. So uh, what is your next project, Hanoch? Okay, so uh, due to, to the crisis uh, of the pandemic, mm -hmm. uh, of course, uh, the world stopped. Yes. But I, I, I re researched a new project. By the way, again, it's um, dealing with the Holocaust, but from a new point of view. It's too early to, to speak about it, uh, but okay. I'm very happy. Uh, I have a research of two new stories that I think, again, I hope, again, it will bring a new point of view. Uh, by the way, 
it's always important for me to bring also optimism. Uh, we are talking about a uh, horrible period uh, and dark days, but yet for me it's important to bring a message of uh, hope. Uh, I think the dialogue between both sides is the main uh, thing if we want to, uh, to bring a message of hope, to learn something from it and not just to deal who blame and who did and, and etc. Mm -hmm. So uh, the two stories that I'm researching uh, in, the, uh, in the moment, it's also, uh, I hope it will bring a new point of view um, uh, and fresh maybe point of view. And I hope it will reach the youngster uh, that it's all, always very important for me. Yes, okay, so I understand. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing your next projects. So thank you very much, Hanoch, for this interesting thank you very conversation. Much. And um, dear audience, if you like this film, don't forget the Audience Award, which was um, donated by BR and Dreisat. You can vote for this film on the film program page at DocFest. And um, I wish you a very good um, time at DocFest Munich Online 2021. Thank you.